6 News at 11. State lawmakers and local leaders are looking for new ways to help young people who cross paths with the justice system. It's our top story at 11. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Nate Salazar. Sherry and Siobhan have the night off. Juvenile justice reform has been the focus of several state bills signed into law this year on top of a new specialty court here in Ingham County. Josh Sanchez has more on some of these reforms and how community and state leaders are looking back at these changes. Josh. Nate, the question on how to tackle youth crimes is something that has brought state, city, and community leaders together. New state and local programs are expected to create new and expand existing pathways towards re rehabilitation rather than harsh court penalties. Juvenile justice can't be one size fits all because we know that all kids are unique, their situations are unique, and you know, one kid might need mental health treatment, another kid might not. Democratic State Representative Kara Hope sponsored a bill that is part of a much larger package of legislation signed earlier this month. The bill's reforming the juvenile justice system in part requires courts to run young offenders through a risk and mental health screening tool to better plan what diversion or resources could be used to help a child. Republican State Representative Sarah Leitner also backed another bill in that package. This fall, Rep. Leitner said in part, this plan renews our efforts to improve the lives of young people and their families, all while ensuring the sensible use of taxpayer dollars on proven programs and practices. This comes around the same time as Ingham County Court officials unveiled a new weapon specialty court. The program would give eligible offenders, kids from 10 to 17 years old, a chance to go through mentoring and resource support. It's an idea Rep. Hope agrees with. If they get that wraparound type service, they can really uh, take advantage and succeed more so than if they're just, you know, in the cookie cutter system. Michael McKissick's Mikey23 Foundation is one of the mentoring options. He says he's encouraged by the changing tide in justice reform. It leaves him with hope for a decline in youth violence in the next year. We can, we talking to them, are we listening to them? Are we listening to what's going on with them at school? Are we listening to what's going on when they leave our house? Are we really listening to them? You know, so that's what we have to do as a community and as parents and as guardians as well. Now, earlier this month, five young people became the first to go through that weapons court. McKissick says he expects that they will be referred to programs like his own later this spring. Nate? 